the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Game preview, 49ers versus Green Bay Packers. Divisional playoff is just around the corner. In fact, we're just a little shy of 24 hours as of this recording. So uh, 49ers versus Packers is on the horizon. There is a lot to talk about in this because we've been talking 49ers and Green Bay Packers all week, and it all comes down to this episode where we take everything that we've talked about and we formulate exactly how the 49ers plan to attack some of those key matchups that still have to be decided. We're going to give bold predictions, going to give a game prediction on this game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you guys are all strapped in and seat belted in and ready to go because this is a matchup that is very interesting. You got the San Francisco 49ers who, until they played the Baltimore Ravens on primetime Christmas evening, were considered the best team in the NFL and the media darling. People were starting to call the 49ers a shoe in to win the Super Bowl. They had a bad game. And then after that, people have been finding reasons why the 49ers can lose. You have some former executives saying Brock Purdy is not even as good as the other seven quarterbacks that are left in the playoffs. Yet, he got number one in Pro Bowl voting. He was just short of making the All-Pro. He's had the best numbers throughout the entire season yet he's not one of the best quarterbacks still remaining. Very interesting. And I think that there's been a lot of disrespect headed towards the 49ers' way. I'm not saying it's coming exactly from Green Bay, even though some has, but just a lot of people are overlooking this 49ers team now. Is that really what you want to do? Do you really want to put a chip on the San Francisco 49ers' shoulders? We've seen how they've done in previous years as underdogs. They can go in there and they can make things happen. So I don't know if you really want to see a motivated San Francisco 49ers. But when you get into the playoffs, this is where Kyle Shanahan really shines. He's 3-0 and in the divisional round, which means he doesn't lose. 49ers with this win would be going to their third consecutive NFC Championship game. They've been to a lot recently. Since 2019, this 49ers team has consistently been in the big game. Now, of course, 2020 was marred by injuries, and the 49ers didn't even make the playoffs. But 2019, NFC Championship game, 2021, 2022, and they're hoping to make it a fourth uh, opportunity out of five years to go to the NFC Championship game. And standing in their way is a good Packers team. The Green Bay Packers dismantled the, the Dallas Cowboys last week and really did a good job of exploiting the weaknesses that Dallas Cowboys were displaying. The offense got going with Aaron Jones, and he was running well, and uh, we got to look at a quarterback like Jordan Love making big plays and just say, you know what? That guy, pretty good. And I think when you look at the Packers' defense and how they played, they were opportunistic. They took advantage of uh, Dak Prescott throwing the ball to them and made the most out of it. So I look at this matchup and I see two quality teams with quality coaching staffs and really uh, good fan bases. And this is going to be a fun one. This is the 10th matchup of 49ers versus Packers in the playoff. Number one all-time in the NFL. It has all the makings for everything you want. This is going to be a great one. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already on the push for 5K. And all the subscriptions lately have me inching closer. So thank you guys so much. If you're listening on Auto Platform, 40 yards cut back on, believe. Please give it a five-star rating. And just like always, if you are going to bet on this game, why not bet with Bet Online? With the NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing, Bet Online has you covered with all the up to the second odds, news, and scores. With additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile, you can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today and get in on the action to see all the updated odds. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So here it goes. San Francisco 49ers versus the Green Bay Packers. Everything you could possibly want. 
And I'm going to start on the offensive side of the ball because I love offense. And that's one thing when I coached, uh, I was definitely drawn more to the offense, even though I did have some time on the defensive side of the football. When it comes to offense, there's just something poetic about it. There's something about attacking a defense that's just a lot of fun. And what do the 49ers want to do in this game? Well, the first thing you want to do when you're looking at the opposing team and you're building your game plan, you want to find those weaknesses, maybe things they don't do entirely well. It doesn't mean they're awful at them, but it means, hey, I have a distinct advantage here. And I think the clearest advantage that the 49ers have is their run game against the Green Bay Packers defense. The 49ers average 141 yards on the ground, led by Christian McCaffrey and what he provides nearly 1,500 yards in 16 games. Great season for Christian McCaffrey. But you've got a Green Bay Packers defense that hasn't been superb against the run. They give up 128 yards per game on the ground. So they give up almost the 49ers average on the ground. That means the 49ers have a distinct advantage as far as rushing the football. And Green Bay Packers know this as well. So what is going to be their game plan? What does Joe Barry do to limit the effectiveness of Christian McCaffrey? Because let's be honest, if they can approach this run game, the 49ers, and they can take the elements out of the game because it does look like there's probably going to be some showers during the football game. If you could keep it on the ground and be effective with the football on the ground with Christian McCaffrey, Elijah Mitchell, and Debo Samuel, you're going to have a advantage because if they can't get off the field and you can run the ball, you keep the ball out of harm's way. You keep it protected. You keep your defense on the sideline and you put the Green Bay Packers in a world of hurt. So I think that that's exactly what the 49ers want to do. Now, of course, with all things, your intention going into a game could be, hey, let's just establish a run game from the beginning and take advantage of Green Bay's ineffectiveness to stop it. Now, Barry knows what his defense's weaknesses are. That's one of the things that Matt LaFleur, since he's been helping with the defense, I'm sure, has taught him what is going on. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to try to load up early and they're going to try to take away McCaffrey, take away the 49ers run game and put the onus on Brock Purdy. So even though the 49ers want to establish a run game early, they want to have success with Christian McCaffrey that includes explosive plays. I fully expect Joe Barry and that Green Bay Packers defense to try to load up eight guys in the box, extra defensive linemen up front, go big and put the onus on Brock Purdy. Here's where the issue lies. If Brock Purdy can handle the football, if he can get the ball out of his hands on time, he's going to absolutely light up the Green Bay Packers defense. Because when you commit like that and you bring an extra safety into the box, you bring an extra defensive lineman onto the field, it leaves you vulnerable to the 49ers playmakers. And the 49ers have a plethora of playmakers. We don't know what's going to happen with Jair Alexander. He... Uh, is questionable for the game. I think he'll give it a go, but we don't know what he's going to look like. And as the rain falls, what is that ankle going to do when his feet start slipping out from under him? That's a question mark. But let's say he's matching up with Brandon Ayuk. Let's say he limits Brandon Ayuk. Who's matching up with Debo? Who's tackling Debo in the rain? It's going to be a little bit harder to tackle these guys when they're wet. Yes, there's a lot of guys that are going to slip down. They're going to struggle with weather. That's just the case anytime you get in a game that has elements. But imagine being a 49er and ha or a Green Bay Packer and having to tackle Debo Samuel in space when he's slippery and wet because Debo Samuel is a mutter. He can run in the mud. So can Christian McCaffrey. So I think that's an interesting thing in this game as well. Plus, you have George Kittle and the fact that he's really good at getting over the middle and the Green Bay Packers are not good at stopping tight ends. So... Right off the bat, you see a distinct advantage for the 49ers in the run game. And when the 49ers are attacking that run game, it's going to be about attacking those edge defenders. Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, and they are good. Here's the issue, though. Their rotation just took a big hit. And Abare is out. He's not playing in this game, which means you have the young rookie Van Ness. That's great. But now the fourth rotational piece is Britton Cox which means the 49ers have a distinct advantage at running right at Britton Cox. Now, if you're the Green Bay Packers, you probably understand the 49ers want to run at him and they could somewhat protect him. 
But the problem is, if you overcommit to stopping the run and helping Brenton Cox, you leave something else open. So it's a catch-22 for the Green Bay Packers. And I think that the 49ers are going to look at those edge defenders as an area to press. Because anytime you play a 3-4 defense and those outside linebackers walk up, they walk up outside of your edge offensive linemen, your tight end, your edge blockers. Uh, they give, they want to hold the ground and keep the outside contained, but they also open a void for you to be able to run the football. So what do the 49ers do all year? Everyone's seen this. They get an initial push with an edge blocker. They have another motion guy or a puller come through, get an extra push, widen out uh, the edge, and create opportunities to run the football. I think that's exactly what the 49ers try to do in this game. I think there's going to be a little bit of the short toss, the little quick toss, where Christian McCaffrey can get vertical early. I think they're going to try to get movement on those edge guys. They're going to use pullers. They're going to use wham blocking. They're going to do a lot of things to help move this run game. And the Fourniers are going to try to establish that run game early, but I think that's the point of attack. The Green Bay Packers have not been good at the stopping the run, and a lot of it has to do with the ineffectiveness of some of their defensive linemen. Uh, they have really solid defensive players. Gary, Preston, Smith are good. Kenny Clark is good. Uh, but the other ones you could take advantage of. They can also get onto these linebackers and make some plays there. And I talk about these linebackers to talk about this. If you're looking for an advantage, you're looking for Christian McCaffrey against the linebackers of the Green Bay Packers. Christian McCaffrey is one of the best out of the backfield in the entire league. And we've seen this from time to time. 49ers line up against the Seattle Seahawks, and we know we want McCaffrey. We want him on Bobby Wagner. That's just an advantage 49ers. They try to put Jamal Adams on him. That's not working either. So you come into this game and you got Quay Walker, who is the 47th best out of 50 qualifying linebackers as far as coverage grade. And then you've got Devondre Campbell, who's 29th out of 50. Advantage 49ers. And I know Joe Barry could be running zone. We know he's going to run a lot of blitzes, those uh, fire zone blitzes. He's going to bring guys. He's going to sit three deep. We know what he's going to do. But what that's going to allow is the 49ers to have some of their playmakers operate in space. And Kyle Shanahan is the best in the league about locating a matchup that he wants to take advantage of and then moving players before the snap and then motioning right before the snap and getting the look you want. And that's exactly what he plans to do in this game. He's going to get a couple of times where Joe Barry can't protect Quay Walker and Quay Walker is one-on-one -on -one with Christian McCaffrey or one-on-one -on -one with Debo Samuel coming out of the backfield. And while that's going on, you have all this window dressing, motions, shifts, guys moving around. You got Debo and Christian McCaffrey. One of them's moving before the snap. The other one's in the backfield with Brock Purdy. Who do you watch? Do you go with Debo Samuel? Do you, do you respect him going across? Uh, do you go with Christian McCaffrey on the run, the run fake? You have to be real careful what you decide if you're Green Bay. And so what happens is it's all about numbers as far as blocking, especially in the running game. You can get numbers on one side and attack the other. You have an advantage. Well, imagine if you can keep a defense from being able to load up on one side or the other and take away one of your strengths. Now they're guarding space. You have balance. Or yes, that's why they run a lot of ace formation. They can find balance when they're going to their run game. Normal, the same amount of holes to each side. So I look at this game and I see advantages for the 49ers manipulating the linebackers of Green Bay. And once you get them fully committed to coming in and trying to stop McCaffrey and Debo in the running game, it opens up the void in the middle of the field. And we know that if you get George Kittle up into the middle of the field, good things are going to happen. There are opportunities for George Kittle in the passing game. There are opportunities over the middle for Brandon Ayuk on the deep dig. There are opportunities for Debo Samuel to catch the ball and run against this Green Bay Packers defense. So I think the 49ers are going to establish that run game early and then really look to build off that with play action and to attack Quay Walker, especially with Christian McCaffrey. We talked about the edge blockers against the rotational edge defenders. I think that's going to be huge in this game. And then, of course, Brock versus the Blitz is going to be huge. Uh, so Brock Purdy is one of the best in the league. And the Green Bay Packers blitz the sixth highest this year at 18.3%. So Joe Barry likes to bring a fifth guy. He likes to bring an extra defender to get after you. Well, guess what? Brock Purdy is the best NFL quarterback versus the blitz this season. 
Brock had a 10.2 yards per attempt average. That's more than his normal average. So he's better against the blitz. He had 15 touchdowns to three interceptions. That's remarkable. He's done a really good job. And he has an NFL best 6.7% big time throw percentage. You come after Brock, you run the risk of getting beat deep, right? What's the old saying? You live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. And yes, it was cool uh, for Green Bay defensive linemen to kind of talk a little bit of trash this week, say, hey, if we get on to Brock, he's going to make mistakes. The numbers say otherwise. So you do that at your own peril. If you want to bring a fifth guy, be careful. That means the 49ers, if they get the ball out of Brock Purdy's hands and into their playmaker's hands, are going to have an advantage on the back end. You're going to need every single guy you have to tackle Debo Samuel and George Kittle in space. Don't think that these two ain't going to be going out there and playing like their hair is on fire. They're going to be absolutely feeling this moment. This game is going to be huge. And the elements, I think, actually add to the effectiveness of George Kittle. Uh, nothing says tough, gritty like George Kittle in the rain. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And we all know if you establish that run game and you get that play action game going, that's when the 49ers offense really, really takes off. You have to make sure you win the time of possession. Keep the offense on the field, winning on third down. So that is what I think on offense. The 49ers are going to try to establish a run game. And if Green Bay tries to overload and take it away early, Brock Purdy will have to make them hurt. Once they get soft again and back off, they'll go back to the run game. And so it will be, let's see how Green Bay attacks this. You're going five defensive linemen. You going at a safety in the box? Okay, we're going to take advantage of you with Brock Purdy getting the ball to the middle of the field to George Kittle, uh, out in space to Debo Samuel on screens, and then we're going to use misdirection in the backfield uh, with Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel. I expect both of them to be very, very important in the run game as far as reverses, counters, and just motions as far as looks. I think that's exactly how the four yards are going to do it. And they're going to keep him honest by getting Brandon Ayuk on those deep digs and deep over routes where they can get him the football in space and let him create. Uh, 49ers know what they're going to get from Barry. Kyle Shanahan coached with him in Tampa Bay when Kyle was a quality control coach. He coached against him when he was at the Rams. He knows what Joe Barry does. And so the 49ers are going to be well equipped to go after it. Now on the defensive side of the football, it starts with stopping Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is the number one threat as far as success for the Green Bay Packers. And I know everyone wants to look at Jordan Love and they want to look at this talented wide receiver room and they are talented. They have young players that have stepped up consistently throughout this year and made big plays. But it all starts and stops with Aaron Jones because when Aaron Jones rushes for over 100 yards, the Packers win football games. In fact, their four-game winning streak at the end of the year, every single one of those games, Aaron Jones ran for over 100 yards. In fact, when you look at Jordan Love, he's so much better when he has Aaron Jones rushing for over 100 yards. But isn't that all quarterbacks, especially a Shanahan-style offense? You get a run game going, and everything is married to that. Everything looks the same, and then everything produces because you have to commit to the run game, and then it opens voids over the middle of the field. And so Aaron Jones has to be the 49ers' number one focus. Now, one thing that we know about the 49ers defense is their number one focus is always stopping the run. Nick Bosa said this week, if we stop the run and we put uh, Jordan Love under pressure, we'll see what happens. That's our best chance to win. Make them one-dimensional and then get after Jordan Love. Make him feel uncomfortable. Make him rush his throws. Make him believe he's seeing something he's not. Now, that's not easy. The Green Bay Packers did not give up a single sack against the Dallas Cowboys last week. But the Dallas Cowboys pass rush is not the San Francisco 49ers pass rush. Yes, Micah Parsons is a stud. He's a really predicated on speed. But what you got with the 49ers is two defensive ends that have the speed and power to be able to give you every single pass rush you're looking for. You want a speed rush around the outside where you dip your hips, uh, you, or you, you get underneath, and you go after the quarterback? That's Nick Bosa. That's Chase Young. You want a power guy that can go ahead and back those guys into Jordan Love and collapse the pocket. Chase Young and Nick Bosa can do that. They play with great leverage. They play with great get-off, and they are explosive. And then when you look at that interior part of the 49ers defensive line, 
Eric Armstead is a playoff beast. When he plays in the playoffs, he makes big-time plays. He gets sacks. He makes an impact on games. And next to him is a wrecking ball who the 49ers added during the offseason in Javon Hargrave. Hargrave is somebody that understands the moment. He's played in the playoffs. He's played in a Super Bowl. He understands what these moments mean, and he is a penetrator. He's going to be an absolute problem for the interior part of the offensive line for the Green Bay Packers, especially John Runyon. I think that's an advantage 49ers. I think the 49ers can take advantage of the interior part of the Green Bay Packers offensive line. And it's been good, but now you're going to get to elite defensive line in the San Francisco 49ers. And there's no weaknesses across the board. Those are four stud players that you're going against. And then you know what happens with the 49ers rotate. They bring in Randy Gregory, who's a solid edge player. They bring in Javon Kinlaw, Kevin Givens, Sebastian Joseph Day on the interior. Then they got young Robert Beal, who could be the biggest question mark for the 49ers as far as rotation on the defensive line. But it's absolutely loaded. So I'm excited about that. But what do you do to stop Aaron Jones? How do you stop that Green Bay Packers run game? Well, first off, you're committed to it. You have to make sure that's your first intent. Stop run first, then defend the pass. And then what you have to do is set a good edge. Chase Young and Nick Bosa need to make sure they squeeze these plays down. They need to make sure that when uh, they're running a read option, that they go ahead and they either squeeze it down or they keep an eye out on Jordan Love. But the main focus has to be stopping Aaron Jones. You have to make sure you don't get kicked out. You don't give up room. You've got to compress this offensive line down. Less space is going to make it more difficult for them to run the football. And Aaron Jones is a good back. You give him the opportunity, you give him the space, you give him a hole, he's going to find it. He's just that good. He can do it all. He's got enough speed to run the outside zone. He's got enough power to run inside. He's got the patience to run the gap scheme. The guy's just got all the attributes that you're looking for in a complete running back, and he is. So the 49ers are going to have to be very dedicated to staying in their gaps. The 49ers run a one-gap scheme, which means... Each player is designated a gap that they have to occupy, and it's imperative that they do so. The other thing that's hugely imperative in this game is for the 49ers' defensive line to occupy blockers, especially on the interior part of the defensive line. Armstead and Hargrave must win against double teams. They must defeat duo blocks. They have to take advantage of getting into the backfield and making some plays but mainly they have to hold their ground and keep offensive players off Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, Oren Burks. If the 49ers defensive line can do that, the San Francisco 49ers will slow down the running game of Aaron Jones and the Green Bay Packers. And we don't know what's going to happen with the backup running back, A.J. Dillon, for Green Bay. He's listed as questionable. He hasn't practiced in a while, and it's not looking good for him. So if he's not able to go, there's not a consistent backup behind the Green Bay Packers. So the 49ers need to make it tough on Aaron Jones. They need to make him earn every single yard that he gets, make it difficult, put pressure on Jordan Love by forcing third and long situations. So it's diligent. It's staying in your gap. It's being disciplined. It's occupying blockers. And it's safeties coming up, corners coming up, and playing the run fits correctly. When we're talking about run fits, what we're saying is those guys have to come up and play right into their gap or right into their run responsibility. There are certain responsibilities. Some guys have to come up, cut it off. Other guys have to go make the tackle, and other guys are responsible for a cutback lane. Everyone has to be on their P's and Q's. They have to be disciplined. They have to be detail-oriented to be able to stop the Green Bay Packers' run game. But if they do, and then the 49ers' offense is able to have early success, they will make LaFleur go away from the run game and rely more on Jordan Love and the passing game to catch up to this 49ers football team. That's ultimately what you want. That's when Nick Bosa, Chase Young, and this interior defensive line can pin their ears back and go after the quarterback. That is when defensive backs can play coverage more and go after a little bit of the ball as far as ball hawks and worry less about run. So that's significant in this game. Also, if you stop the run game of Green Bay, you're probably going to have some opportunities to get them off the field, which means you can get your ball back to your offense and wear their defense down even more. When you get to the end of the football game, 
and they're worn out on defense. A guy like Rashawn Gary, who's playing 40 snaps and below over the last five weeks, and all of a sudden he's having to play 60 plus. That's when you know they're going to be tired in the fourth quarter and you can win. So it is a it's a all around complete effort that's needed for the San Francisco 49ers stopping Aaron Jones. Then you've got to get the ball out of Jordan Love's hands quickly. You have to make him uh, throw, you know, throw the football by getting pressure on him. Now, what you want to do is take away the easy throws. Uh, you want to you want to take away reads one and two, make him go through his progression, and then that'll give you enough time to get home. So secondary has to take away reads one and two, make him go through his progression, and then defensive line has to be there. Do not allow extended plays to end up in big plays down the field where you give someone time enough to defeat Diameter Lenore on a slot fade or to get vertical against Ambry Thomas. Those things can be negated by a defensive line just playing really solid football by rushing forward, getting home. And the Green Bay Packers, like I said, their offensive line has played well. But now it's four on these five, and the four that the 49 yards are bringing are pretty savage. They've got to go out there guns blazing and take advantage of this game. And when it comes to the secondary, you just have to stay disciplined. Play your coverage. Play it the right way. Do not jump routes. Make sure you're dedicated to what you're doing. Let your eyes guide your body. Read through the wide receiver to the quarterback, and you'll be just fine. And when you get that opportunity, absolutely take the ball away. That is a key in this game for the 49ers, is getting a takeaway against a Green Bay Packers offense that hasn't really been turning the ball over recently, including Jordan Love, only one interception in the last 10 games. He's been playing really, really superb. Of course, when you're talking defensive line, they have to make sure they stop the screens with Armstead and Hargrave. I think they can slow that down for sure. And then Gibson and Logan Ryan and Jair Brown, just, just slow down those tight ends. Just, just slow down the young guys, Luke Musgrave. You know, Make sure you take advantage of getting him stopped. You can do that, and you've proven so far this year that you can as far as Tishon Gibson, you're going to be fine. And I think Green Bay's attack against the 49ers, they're really going to want to establish Aaron Jones running the football early in this game. And if the 49ers stop, it could change some things. But uh, get the ball out of Jordan Love's hands quickly. That's what they want to do. They want to get some easy throws for him. They want to get some opportunities for him to be able to uh, get on the edge and make some plays as far as Daubs, uh, Christian Watson, and Jaden Reed and these playmakers get it into their hands and let them create in the open space. Uh, the 49ers got to make sure they limit the effectiveness of those playmakers and not allow Jordan Love the opportunity to just get the ball out quickly and get into any sort of a rhythm. You want him to have to create. You want him to feel pressure. You want to get after him, and you want to get sacks. So uh, that's exactly what they're going to be trying to do. And we talk about this almost every week. You want to make sure uh, you make him – you know, take away one and two by disguising coverage, confusing him post-snap. 49ers have done a really good job since their bye week against the Jaguars doing that. Now, third down and long is a must. And why do I say it's a must in this football game? Because the Green Bay Packers convert at at 47%. Basically, they're just behind the 49ers. 49ers are 47.5, Green Bay 47.1. But when you force third and long, third and seven plus, That's when you have the opportunity to get off the field, and that's when those numbers go down. And if you could start forcing three and outs or punting situations for Green Bay, give your offense more opportunities, you got to feel comfortable with that. And with the 49ers, they got to win on third down. They've got to stay on schedule in first and second. They need to get three or four yards on first and second each play, so that way they force third and three, third and two, third and one. Uh, Those are situations. Well, my favorite is when the 49ers stay ahead of schedule, They don't even face third down. Let's just do that. Uh, But I think the 49ers know that third down conversions are huge, and they've got to make sure they convert because both of these defenses give up third down conversions at a 40% rate. It's like 41, almost identical. 49ers 40.9, Packers 41.1. They're mere images as far as effectiveness on third down, but that's going to be hugely pivotal in who wins the time of possession, who's able to continue drives, and who can, can wear down the opposing defense as this game progresses. And then it's about turnovers. And when you look at the 49ers uh, you know, and the Packers, they have only turned the ball over 18 times apiece. So they've done a good job taking care of the football, and that's exactly what you want from your squad. Make sure you hold on to the football. And let's be honest, a couple games for Brock Purdy that he doesn't throw as many interceptions as he did, and this number will be even further down. So 
Uh, I think that that Brock's got to make sure he takes care of the football. That's going to be a key. When the 49ers don't turn over the football, the 49ers win. Uh, when they turn over the football, there's a chance they could lose. So uh, taking care of that football is going to be paramount in this game. When it comes to takeaways, the 49ers are the better football team taking away the ball. The 49ers, 28 turnovers on the season. Ball Hawks in the secondary. Charverius Ward with five interceptions this season. When you look at the Packers, they had 18 in the regular season, two in the postseason, so they have 20 on the season right now through 18 games. And you've just got to make sure you take care of the ball. They haven't been great at creating turnovers, so let's not give them any freebies, not give them any opportunities. Just take care of the football. Make the sound decision. When you have the play downfield, take it. When you don't, go ahead and get it underneath and take the play that's there. That's what Brock Purdy's goal is this week. And then when it comes to the run game, Christian McCaffrey doesn't fumble much. He's fumbled twice this season. He doesn't turn over the football. I like the 49ers' chances in this game. And the turnover differential, 49ers are plus 10, and the, and the Green Bay Packers are plus 2 after their playoff performance. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really exciting to see you know how everyone's doing in this matchup. And uh, now it's time for some wow, that's bold predictions. Wow, that's really bold. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It's got to be really bold. It's got to be whoa. And I was looking at this. I've been watching so much Green Bay Packers, uh, trying to figure out where the 49ers' advantages are and where they're not, and try to find out who is going to have big games. And it's interesting because every time I watch the film, I find matchups for Christian McCaffrey. I'm like, ooh, McCaffrey against Quay Walker. That's nice. 49ers run game. That's nice. And then I look at George Kittle, and I'm like, oh, man, George Kittle, he's going to have a big game. They're not good against tight ends. There are things op open uh, just outside the hash marks. Uh, there's going to be some opportunities for him down the field. And then all of a sudden, I just get this feeling from watching it. I'm like, you know what? Ebo Samuel is going to have a big game. I just have this feeling that Debo Samuel is going to make some big plays in this game. This is Debo Samuel weather. This is Debo Samuel's time. Playoff time is when the biggest players step up in the biggest moments, and Debo Samuel is going to make an impact in this game. I think Debo Samuel is going to have two touchdowns. I do. I think he's going to be an explosive. I think he's going to be hard to tackle in the rain, and I think he's going to be a big reason why the 49ers make some plays on offense. Uh, so, yeah, I would normally go with George Kittle on this, but I'm going with Debo. I just think, even though I think George Kittle's going to have a good game, I think Debo's going to make some explosive plays that kind of determine the outcome of this game for sure. When I look at, when I look at the other ones, I'm going Christian McCaffrey with two touchdowns. I think McCaffrey is going to be a problem for Quay Walker. I think McCaffrey's going to be a problem in the run game. And I think him and Debo Samuel uh, used in tandem are going to be like two queens that Kyle Shanahan can move around and do whatever he wants, whether that's running the football or catching the football in the backfield. I think he's going to have some matchups that really work in his favor. And I think Christian McCaffrey is going to have two touchdowns in this game. When I look over on the defensive side of the ball, I think they're going to hold Aaron Jones under 75 yards. I think with Eric Armstead being back, a healthy Hargrave, and the way the Fournieres are able to get their linebackers, Drake Greenlaw, Fred Warner, into the open windows, I think they're going to be able to slow down the Green Bay Packers' run game, and I think they're going to be highly effective uh, in doing that. I think they could probably do that with seven. Occasionally, they'll bring the safety in for an eighth man. But I think the 49ers are going to focus on this, and I think they're going to have a really good game plan. The fact that Armstead sits and he watches film and he breaks it down and he sends what he finds to not just Chris Kacarek, uh, but also to Steve Wilkes, I think these guys buy into the game plan and then they execute it knowing their strengths and weaknesses. I think they stop Aaron Jones from getting over 75 yards, which gives the 49ers a good chance to win. And then I have Hargrave and Armstead combining for three sacks. I mentioned it a little bit earlier from watching the film. I see there's some advantages for the 49ers along the, the offensive, against the offensive line of Green Bay, whether that's Runyon or Myers. I think those are some places they can take advantage of. Armstead is a beast during the playoffs, and now you're letting these guys go. All effort, everything you got, nothing holding back. I just think they're going to make some big-time plays, and the best place to get pressure on a quarterback is coming right down the middle at him and in his face, and I think that's exactly what the 49ers are going to do in this with Armstead and with Hargrave, and I think they're going to be a problem, and I think a lot of times Jordan Love's going to try to turn. Bosa and, Hargrave, or Bosa and Chase Young are going to be there 
and those interior guys are going to get some sacks when he tries to step up. So uh, I think they're going to combine for three sacks. I think it's going to be a big game for that 49ers defensive line. And I have a wow, that's bold prediction for special teams. Well, normally, I don't do special teams. In fact, the last special teams, wow, that's bold I gave was the playoff game, 49ers versus Packers, where I said there was going to be a big play on special teams that was going to change the outcome of that game. And Jordan Willis had a block punt. And I have a feeling something's going to happen in this game. I think the 49ers are going to get a special teams turnover. I, I know that both these teams aren't good at special teams, but I have a feeling with the wet ball and with a situational football, the 49ers are going to get something that happens on special teams that's going to impact this football game. And I think it's going to be a turnover uh, and that's going to benefit the 49ers and their special teams. So that's my wow, that's bold prediction. And that means it's time. It's time for the game prediction. Who is going to win this matchup of the Green Bay Packers versus the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round? Well, if you started adding up my wow, that's bold, and you saw there's going to be two touchdowns from Debo, and you saw there's going to be two touchdowns for Christian McCaffrey, that means I would have to believe that the Green Bay Packers could score over 30 points against this 49ers defense to be able to win the football game. Do I think they can score at times against this 49ers defense? I do. I think Jordan Love can make some plays down the field. I think he's got some dynamic playmakers who are dangerous with the ball in their hands. I think Aaron Jones will still be semi-effective against this 49ers defense. But when it's all said and done, the San Francisco 49ers are going to win this football game. And I think they're going to win this football game by 11 points. I think the Niners score 34. The Green Bay Packers score 23. And the 49ers advance to the NFC Championship game for a third straight year. I just think when it comes down to it, the 49ers are a more complete team. They're more balanced. And they have all the veteran leadership you could possibly want at this time in the year. And, uh, yeah, the Green Bay Packers, they're going to be good. They're going to be tough. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be physical. And you have two coaching staffs that are well-respected and two young stud quarterbacks who are going to go out there and prove it. But I think the 49ers defense is too good. I think the 49ers offensive playmakers are too good. And I think when it comes down to it, you gave them the necessary rest that they needed by getting the number one seed. And Kyle Shanahan, extra time to prepare the Green Bay Packers who are on a short week. Are the Packers hot? Yes. They're not hot enough to beat the 49ers. So 49ers get the big win. I wonder what all you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below. 49ers or Packers, uh, give me your score prediction. Give me your wow, that's bold predictions. I'm always interested to see what people say. But like and subscribe to the channel. If you think I deserve it on that push for 5K. And this episode of 49ers Cutback was brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. Game on Saturday. Here it comes. I'll catch you guys for more content after the game. 49ers big win. Let's get it. But until then, stay safe. And remember the right way is always the 49ers.